okay and so right now we have taken the armhole measurement where we've added the back armhole plus the front armhole and we have had a total of 20 and three quarter inches then we go to the next one which is the bicep or the around arm that is the the widest portion of your your muscles of your muscles that and so mine is 12 and half 12 and half okay and then the sleeve length as you would want it my sleeve length is 10 inches that is if it is short sleeve if it is short sleeve then it is 10 inches and so i have 10 inches and so right now we have all the measurements that we need to be able to start with our sleeve pattern drafting but before we go on to that this is very important that i want us all to to avert our minds to i should have started even with this before you know continuing to this part in as much as i know that we all are very aware of how to take our measurement for what's the name for the the dress or the shirt itself i'm using dress and shirt interchangeably because this same method can work for both uh, female and then male garments just that with a female garment usually the back is not made long you know to overlap like this so that the front pattern you know comes to meet it along the way we, we with the ladies we don't usually do this we don't usually do this and even with the men it's not everybody who who does it this way where the back measurement when you are drafting the, the back pattern and the front pattern you make the back pattern quite longer so that it's able to flow forward to meet the front pattern like this we don't usually do it <clears throat> it is also very critical that when you have it this way the back measurement will always the back measurement will always be considered because if the distance from your shoulder to shoulder the distance from shoulder to shoulder if it is not cut accurately or if it is not measured accurately after fixing your sleeve you would see some excess folds around uh, around your your shoulder area which you also want to avoid if you want to cut a perfect sleeve <clears throat> And also your across chest and then across back measurement you should also be very very careful uh, I saw some you know picture on let us so you know a while ago and then somebody you know was asking how you could eliminate the crumbles around the armhole area and a lot of ideas were being shared one thing you should know is that you need to take your shoulder to shoulder measurement if you are taking uh, you need to take your across chest measurement the across chest measurement is usually taken from this very part where the sleeve joins the body you need to take this measurement from here all the way to this part when you're able to take measurement from here to here which is the across chest it gives you a perfect sleeve because when you make your across chest wider and then you come back to fix your sleeve the excess that was added to your across chest will become the crumples that you see around this area secondly if you do not also slope your shoulder this way and then your shoulder slope was quite longer it means that once you fix your sleeve all the excess that was within this area will all push downwards and then your hand will press them all pushing everything under your armpit and so this is also something very critical that you want to avoid that's why i said in as much as we know how to cut our uh, shirt bodies already if you are cutting a perfect sleeve some of the things that you really need to consider is your across chest measurement secondly 
your across back measurement it is also taken from this all the way to that area right where the body joins the the hand that joint that's also where you should take your across back measurement and then don't forget that your shoulder slope should also be made perfect when your shoulder is sloping well it means that your sleeve can be fixed without having any challenges thank you very much for for bearing this in mind and so we go back to our table and then continue with uh, the sleeve once we have gotten the basics that we need when we are drafting our uh, shirt itself the front and then the back bodies okay so right now we have our arm depth we have our arm hole we have our round arm our bicep or our muscle and then we have the sleeve length that we are going to use and so we can now start with drafting our sleeve pattern that is why because it's a sleeve that we are most interested in that's why i'm using the the white pattern paper so that we'll be able to you know follow and then see clara we'll start by we'll start by first squaring off our starting point let's say this is where we want to start our sleeve from and so we square this part off we square this part off our sleeve length is 10 inches and so we'll start our 10 inches from here to this portion i mean towards this area and so this is 10 inches and because we will also be sewing we'll be fixing it onto our shirt we definitely have to add our seam allowance to it the seam allowance i use often is just a quarter inch quarter inch that is what i use and so the total length becomes 10 and a quarter okay and so once i have gotten the starting point which is the cup head and then where i'm going to end which is the the end of the of the sleeve i can as well square this off so that i know i'm very sure of where my sleeve is starting from and where it is going to end and so i have these two lines okay the next thing is to use the arm depth that we we had from the shirt it is the arm depth that is going to tell us how wide our shirt is supposed to be it is the arm depth that is going to determine how wide our our sleeve you know should be folded and so in this instance we have seven inches and so seven inches this is the seven inches in the shirt in the shirt we had seven inches arm depth and also we had one inch allowance that was added to the shirt to be able to you know help us so okay that's seam allowance and so we had seam allowance of one inch and so that one inch after we've been able to get our arm depth our arm depth which starts from here to there after we've gotten our arm depth we divided it into two and then we had seven no uh, we divided our no we did not divide the arm depth all that we did was that we have our arm depth which is a combination of our front and then our back our front and our back that's how come we got our arm depth which we've already written down here as being seven inches and then there was an allowance of one inch added so the one inch which was added should also be added onto the sleeve after we've gotten our seven inches yeah that's what i wanted to say and then there was a bit of confusion in my mind and so one inch is is added like this and so we have a total of eight inches from here to that point very well noted okay the second thing we'd also note on this is that 
lot of the allowance that is usually not taken around the armhole this is where the mistake comes from and so this is going to be the cup of the sleeve or the sleeve head and this is where it's going to be this is where the armpit is going to be and so the best measurement should for you to take to be able to get a, 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 most of those allowances away is to use your arm depth the same arm depth that gave us the seven inches here we should use not less than two inches of that arm depth and so in this very sleeve we are going to use six inches just taking one inch away from it bear in mind that the farther you go towards the seven inches the smaller you reduce the higher you reduce the excess or the crumples around your armhole that is the fact and so if your arm depth was seven inches and then in cutting your, your the armhole of your shirt the sleeve you use a figure that was quite low it means that you are going to have a lot of crumples around your armpit and so let's please bear in mind and so with this the arm depth was seven and so we can still use seven and we'll have it perfectly well but sometimes the wider you also make it to make it very you know flat around your shoulder it also becomes very difficult to lift your hands just as you you have a bit of difficulty when you are wearing your suit when you are wearing your suit or your jacket your blazers it's quite difficult to raise your hands very freely and so you don't really want to make it so tight so that you can't let your have your hands and that's how come instead of the seven inches i'm using six inches here and so this is six inches this is our seven inches the seven inches that was used for the arm depth and this is one inch allowance added which we will sew off and so this is our seam allowance from here to here is our seam allowance we are now going to join this to this point in a curve form if you are fortunate to have this French curve you can just put it here and then you shift this to that point and then you join if you as well have this this is far better you can put it around your 45 inches mark that is about a half inch at, at its back like this and then you join it you are supposed to join this and then you turn this that way to join it to this but when you are doing that you also consider one measurement which is very very critical so i'll be taking you to the dummy again to show it to you and this is what does the magic this is what does the magic taking a measurement from the front where your your hand meets your body this portion you should measure from here all the way to where your hand meets the body at your back and so this measurement when you measure from here all the way to here that is what does the magic and so with mine it's nine inches and so half of nine inches is supposed to give me four and half in actual fact mine is is a little below nine inches it's about eight and half but because i'll be sewing quarter inch all around that is how come i make it nine inches that's how come i make it nine inches and so it means we are supposed to move we're supposed to move from from this joint which is the apex of the of the sleeve it should come four and half the four and half should be around where the the armhole is this area not here and so the four and half should be around here it means under no circumstance should this curve be longer than the four and half this is what does the magic and so let me do it this way this is where our 45 is 
this it just surpasses the foot five by about half like this let me strip this this is 45 and to other back we get this curve like this and then we alternate this like this to come and meet this line and so what we did which is the most critical is to have is to have this 45 a few you know inches away just about one inch along the 45 mark and it shouldn't exceed our four and a half which is the widest part of your arm and the body and so this is it and then we just turn this that way to be able to join our armhole and then where the seven was before we come to where we added our seam allowance we come to where we added our seam allowance and so once we have this we can now come to our bicep or around arm or our muscle and so my muscle is 12 and a half so when i divide it into two i'll get six and a quarter six and quarter the seam allowance that was added to the shirt is one inch the seam allowance added to this sleeve is one inch so the seam allowance added to my bicep my muscle would also be one inch and so in this we get one inch so now we can join this to that to get our perfect sleeve in order to be able to tell if what you have is correct when we measured our armhole we had a total of 20 and 3 quarter 20 and 3 quarter and so we are going to measure from here all the way to the apex point and see if what we get is half of this measurement because this was addition of the whole front and the back when you get the front and back you should be able to divide it into two because this leaf is on fold it's because we are using a pattern paper if we were using our fabric it means we would have folded our fabric in order to be able to get this we would have folded our paper and so we need to measure from here all the way to the top here and see if we get 10 and 3 8. if we get 10 and 3 8 it means we are good to go but the best is to get at least a little above your armhole so that you don't have to struggle when you are fixing your sleeve you don't have to struggle at all okay so we are going to measure and see what we get okay and so i measure this and then i'm getting 10 and 3 quarter i'm getting 10 and 3 quarter 10 and 3 quarter which is perfect a perfect sleeve to be fixed into our shirt a perfect sleeve to be fixed into our shirt thank you very much thank you thank you thank you thank you